It's only 16 roles. I hope you're applying them. That's the key. Um, just watch TV on Sundays and it's, um, watch the preachers and see how they subtly twist truth. And what these rules do is they give you a, a, a basis on how to overcome what they're saying. And, and I do that a lot anyway. I'll watch these guys on TV that I know are teaching wrong, and I will use it to test myself, and, okay, that's wrong. Where in the Bible is it wrong? And I'll use the rules, and I'll go and find in the Bible where it's incorrect so that I can keep myself sharp on these areas. And it's very good self-study. I believe with all my heart, if you're doing it that way, studying the Bible, God's getting ready to bring someone across your path that believes that, and you're going to have a much greater opportunity to impact them for Christ. Just a couple of illustrations about my book. It's only been out a couple of months, but there was a, um, a fellow that came to, to our place of business last Thursday, Thursday a week ago, and he had, we were talking about my book he had just purchased, and he's unsaved, very educated, and um, just he really appreciated the fact that I was putting, I was connecting the dots for him. And he said, I've never read a book that really connects the dots from Lucifer until where we are now and even beyond. So I just stopped him and said, I want to ask you a question. Has there ever been a time where you placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ? And he said, no, there hasn't been. And um, what, we, what I did is, we didn't have time, so I got his email and shipped him an email, sent him the Romans Road, asked him to read it if he had any questions to call me. He wrote me right back and he said, I'm going out to buy a Bible, so what's that Bible you said I need to get? He's never owned a Bible. So he's going, he went out to buy an, an old Schofield King James Bible. That's what I recommended. So he went out to get one of those. And next time he comes on the lot, he usually comes every 10 days, I'm going to ask him if he's made a decision to accept Christ. Because he can do that on your own. If he reads these verses and wants to do it, he can ask him in his heart. I and mean, prayer doesn't save you. It's taking Jesus as your only source to gain access to God that saves you. So I'm going to ask him if he has done that. If he hadn't, I'm going to draw the net. I'm going to ask him if we could do that right now. And then um, Richard came by. He's a friend of mine, works for another company. And I was, on, I was loading his truck. And at the end of it, he stopped me and said, I'm just having a real problem just obeying God. How can I overcome it? And I touch, I go through the whole thing in the tabernacle chapter. The, outer, the brazen altar, the, we went over in here. And he was very interested, so I had a copy of the book, so I gave him a copy. And I said, just read that chapter, and then next time you come by, tell me what you think. And he came by this week, and he said, man, that thing's really helping me. And um, then there's Bill Moxley, 300 pounds all muscle. He worked in the naval shipyard. And the first time I met him, his language wasn't too good. He was, you know, raised rough, you know. So I'm, I'm taking it, no big deal. And then I told him about my book, and he went, oh, my goodness, you know. I, I'm sorry, I should be talking this way, you know. So wait, he, bought, he bought a copy of the book, and um, he, said, he said, there's not been a book that I've read that's made me want to serve God like this book. So I'm, I'm not trying to brag. I'm just trying to say it's a ministering tool. If you know unsaved people, it's, it can impact them. And if you will pray and fast about who God wants you to give a book to, and they read it, they're going to be impacted. There's going to be questions. It, it touches questions you'll never hear from the pulpit. And it, it, you're just not going to touch these top. And, but they're so important to practical everyday living. When you read the book in its entirety, you see how everything fits together to show you what God's plan is and how Satan's trying to stop that plan. And these rules just help you to be able to apply ministry to your everyday life. And this is the key to it all. And, uh, I mean, when I go home to Florence, we talk about the Bible. When I go to Virginia Beach, we talk about the Bible. And, I, you know, it's a part of everything because that's what we're here to do. And uh, it applies, really, to every aspect of our life. Um, so we're on page um, 58, Rule 11. Never forget the consistency of the Bible. This one's really important. And this is one that Satan's attacking with all the multiple versions that are out there today because if you change words, you change consistency. If a word is light in one place and you change it from light to another place, you lose the ability to cross-reference and it's gone. And, and, and again, I want to be very careful because I was in a debate on a blog with someone about Bible versions this week and I just wanted to be very careful with him too. I, I don't think people are sinful when they use other versions. 
They're not. But truth is being blocked from them when they do. If they're not, if it's not from a, 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 a if it's not from the protected text. And I have even started on my blog, which is markherald.wordpress.com, a section called it, "Can the King James Be Trusted?" And when you click onto it, I'm putting a new article in every week comparing the King James with all the other versions, so you can make up your own mind. So, because it is really important which Bible we trust to study. It does make a big difference, and you'll see some of the reasons here. But on, on the consistency of the Bible, once a spiritual pattern is established, it doesn't change. It stays the same. The Bible even says God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And even though God doesn't change, how he has worked with man does. But that's even consistent because he tells you in the Bible when and how and why it changes. From dispensation to dispensation, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. We don't live by those rules anymore. That was for them. When they were kicked out of the Garden and he gave human conscience uh, the deal, he doesn't do that anymore. He does, yes, speak to us, but they didn't have the Word of God back then, except that God actually spoke to them. And then he had human government. We're not under that anymore. And then they had the patriarchs. We're not under that anymore. And then they had the law. We're not under that anymore. We're under grace. So, so even though God doesn't change, the way he deals with man has changed, and that's showing his mercy. After Adam and Eve sinned, he could have said, I'm through with you, human beings. I'm through with you. And after he kicked them out and they failed, he could have said, I'm through with you. And when they failed under human government, he could have said, I'm through with you. And when they failed under the Mosaic Law, he, God is showing his mercy through each dispensation. And at the end of the church age, when he raptures us out, he can say, I'm through with you. But he still, even though it's going to be a horrible, horrendous time, I think we're seeing the beginnings of all of that stuff happening on the news right now. We're seeing these alignments start taking place for a future event. And um, so we're, I think we're living on the cusp of something that's getting ready to be revealed in Bible prophecy. But, so... But even though the tribulation is going to be the most horrendous time this earth has ever seen, he's still showing his mercy, because even though you miss the rapture, he's going to give you an opportunity to come into his um, relationship. And even after the tribulation, if you were friendly to Israel and didn't take the mark of the beast, and you're still alive, you're, you're the sheep nations at that point. We're gone, so that's not us. It's the nations left behind. The ones that didn't take the mark of the beast, the ones that didn't follow the Antichrist, the ones that were friendly to Israel, because remember what God said to Abraham, those who bless you should be blessed, and those who curse you should be cursed. That is a direct prophecy fulfillment at the end of the tribulation. That's what it's referring to. Those that bless Israel will be blessed, and they'll be, walk, they'll be able to walk into the millennial kingdom. Unsaved, but they get to walk in. Well, that's why Jesus has to rule the millennial kingdom with a rod of iron. If everybody was saved and perfect... It's a perfect kingdom, but not everybody is perfect. And that's why he has to rule it with a rod of iron. And you see that in Isaiah and Jeremiah very clearly. That God reigns in a holy reign and, and nothing deviates from that. So w what we see in our dispensations is God loving mankind and bending over backwards to give him an opportunity to come to salvation during their dispensation. So... God doesn't change, but the way he has dealt with man has, but he's still fair with that. He's still just, because he tells us in his word what he's going to do. So, spiritual truth is fixed. It's an absolute constant from Genesis to Revelation. And physical manifestations of spiritual truth can vary, though. Spiritual, physical manifestations of spiritual truth can vary. Remember when God went to Israel, Jesus through Jesus, and Jesus performed the miracles in Israel, and he went to the blind man, and he, he couldn't see, he was blind, and God allowed the man to see. What's the real principle there? What's the real, what's the real teaching behind that? The physical is just showing something spiritual. Don't get caught up on the physical healings. That's not what he's after there. He's trying to teach Israel something. So what do you think he's trying to teach them? Trying to open their heart? Yeah, open up your spiritual eyes. Because all through the Bible, you see where people are blind and they're going the wrong way and the blind leading the blind and all that. So when he came to Israel, every single miracle he did was to show a greater spiritual truth. So when people get all hung up on miracles today, it shows me how immature they are because they're missing what God's really teaching. He's not saying, he, he's not saying the big deal is seen physically. He's saying the 